Hi, I'm going to talk to you for four or five minutes about a, an amazing piece of software which we developed in IT governance to help organizations tackle their compliance obligations, whether or not they're pursuing ISO 27001 certification. If you are pursuing ISO 27001 certification, there are five separate controls in Clause 15 of Annex A which require you to identify applicable legislation dealing with, amongst other things, intellectual property rights, data protection, privacy, protection of organizational records, and cryptographic keys. What the standard is looking for is an identification of not only the laws and regulations that exist, but an identification of which of them may be relevant for your organization and how you've gone about selecting other controls to ensure you comply with those regulations. At the point of recording this webinar, there are some 65 statutes and regulations applicable to organizations operating inside the United Kingdom, with another 25 to 30 due to be added to the database in the course of the next month or two. By applicable, what we mean is that they exist and the scope of those regulations is organizations in the jurisdiction of the United Kingdom. It doesn't mean that all, king, all organizations in the UK have to obey them because a number of organizations may operate in fields to which those laws don't apply or may do things to which the laws and regulations don't apply. There are, of course, a number of regulations such as the Data Protection Act which are likely to apply to all organizations. The screen which you see in front of you is the main screen of the ISMS Legal Compliance Database. It's created in Microsoft Access 2007. It's capable of being operated in an Access 2010 environment. And it's a single user product rather than a network product. It's designed to go onto the workstation or laptop of the person in charge of legal compliance for the organization. It's updated on a regular basis by download either from the FTP site or by transferring data from an email file, depending on what your preferred method of receiving updates is. And the good news about updates is that they don't disturb any amendments which you've made to the database yourself. So we add information or retire information, uh, but the information that you've input is maintained for you. The first screen you see is the legal instrument screen. You get to the legal instrument screen by dealing with uh, selecting from the buttons in the top ribbon. And there are really uh, three important buttons. The first is legal instruments, the uh, screen which is open right now. And it lists the current 65 relevant regulations applying to organizations in the United Kingdom. The second is the set of controls from which you can select to identify how you deal with the requirements of specific laws and regulations. And those of you familiar with ISO 27001 or 2 will recognize the reference as being the reference to the control of Annex A. And in fact, all 133 Annex A controls uh, for ISO 27001, the same control numbers obviously for 27002, are provided for you in the database. The third band is for enforcement bodies, uh, and that identifies the enforcement bodies who have uh, specific powers to ensure the specific regulations are complied with. And for each of those enforcement bodies, uh, as for instance, the investigatory powers tribunal, uh, the information which you get is the uh, name of the organization, the contact details, the website, and where there are specific uh, contact details like telephone numbers, uh, you'll get those as well. Uh, the fourth area in the top band is the retention matrix because uh, this uh, database provides you with information about retention periods for all different types of um, information. Uh, the retention matrix is also updated on a regular basis. And as you can see from the screen in front of you, it breaks down types of document or types of information item uh, into a number. I'll scroll down the screen and you can see the range of items uh, that there are. And it enables you to, and what we provide you with is the uh, period for which you should be retaining the documents. Uh, you can see, for instance, that uh, stock control records held inside the accounting system should be retained for two years, irrespective of whether the organization is a private or a public company. Uh, this database is 
uh, you can update it for each of those records that you've got your own identified set of clear attention requirements. And these enable you to drive your archiving process and your uh, document um, uh, destruction process at the point where you no longer require to retain data. But the core of the application is the legal instruments. So let me take us back to legal instruments. The current set of 65 you can see are uh, listed um, alphabetically down uh, this uh, screen here. And this is simply a database. So it's worthwhile bearing in mind that any changes you make to the database, uh, you don't have a set of options which uh, ask you to be sure that you're making the change and you want to, the change will simply happen. Let me take um, an example of the type of regulation which might be um, applicable to uh, most organizations, the Copyright Designs and Patent Act. Uh, you can open the legislation and you see the detail available for each of the regulations as set out here. And what this is telling you is that for the Copyright Designs and Patent Act, uh, there isn't an enforcement body. The uh, legislation is enforced through the UK civil courts by action of people or persons who feel that their ownership has been um, taken advantage of. And on the right-hand side, there is a general description uh, which you can scroll down to the text of what the Act is about. So it gives you a simple description of uh, what the legislation is if you want to find out in a summary uh, what it is with a link to uh, where you can find the actual Act itself. If you decide the Act is applicable to you, uh, you might enter text into this box here describing why at a high level the Act is applicable. Um, you would in this drop down choose one of uh, yes uh, no or under review, determining uh, your decision as to whether the act is applicable. And each of these decisions will be saved in the database. And if you have a number of units, and this can be configured for any number of locations, you can determine that it might be applicable in some locations, but not in others. So, uh, for instance, you might choose locations to be geographic or divisional uh, or entities, as the case may be, and you can select which locations the act is applicable. You then get a list of the individual clauses that are contained inside the Act. And it's not a list of every single clause because not every single clause is relevant to the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of information. Uh, we've gone through each of these pieces of legislation to identify those clauses which are relevant to an ISMS, and only those clauses are listed here. And they're listed together with the clause number. In this case, you can see uh, clause 11 of the Act is titled Ownership of Copyright. Uh, we recognize that in some cases uh, the whole Act may not be applicable, but individual clauses may be. So you can select uh, yes, no, or under review for each of the uh, relevant clauses. And you can also select why that uh, clause is applicable to you. You don't select them in this area, which is simply the summary uh, of a heading. You can open that out by either clicking the um, button on the left uh, or simply by highlighting, as we have here, the clause. And the highlighting opens up at the bottom of the screen the details of the clause. So you can see again, clause name is ownership of copyright. It became effective on the 15th of November 1988. The status of the law is that it's enforced if an act is withdrawn. Uh, a future update will change that status for you, and you can then remove the necessity of compliance from your own database. The location uh, where you apply that clause to, you will select um, as you will select that it's applicable. And the requirements set out in the uh, act are described fairly clearly in this text box. You can scroll down through the text box. It sets out precisely what the requirement is. And if there are any special um, aspects of compliance, definitions of computer works, databases, and so on that you might need to pay attention to, uh, those are listed in the more detailed implementation requirements. Uh, finally, there is a link to the specific uh, clause that uh, that you're talking about complying with. So you can, if you want to, see the original words. And this links to the United Kingdom uh, government database, which contains all of the original legislation. And then finally, what we do is we uh, suggest the controls that you might select from Annex A, uh, and which might then apply to this particular 
uh, regulation to implement it to the to your compliance with this particular regulation. Uh, and that's pretty well it. So in using the compliance database, you'd work through all uh, 65 regulations. Uh, and as more are added, you'd work through those. You'd select the ones that are relevant to you as an organization, and you would provide the, the updates. And as you can see with this one, the um, overriding choice was that the uh, regulation, Copyright Designs and Patent Act, was applicable to you, and that it's applicable in uh, your location one. There are a number of reports which you can then produce uh, from this. So um, you can produce a report called Applicable Legal Instruments. It's not that legible on this tiny screen. It's much more clearly legible uh, when you're using it full time. But it simply shows for each of the regulations or clauses that you've uh, chosen as being applicable, uh, why they are applicable, so that you can have a report that lists uh, all of those um, regulations for you. Close pre preview takes you. Uh, back. Um, so that gives you legal instruments, uh, applicable legal clauses, gives you exactly that same information but at an individual clause level. And controls applied uh, gives you the selected controls. And remember that in the example I didn't select any controls. Uh, it gives you selected controls so that you can make sure that where you've selected the same control for more than one uh, law or regulation, you can ensure that that control is applied consistently. Um, and finally, uh, as uh, each, per each law there should be someone responsible for implementing it, you can produce a report that shows for each of the um, uh, selected controls what the implementation responsibility is, um, and that produces a report that you can then use to follow through to make sure that implementation is carried through as you want it to. And that in a simple uh, nutshell is the ISMS compliance database. It can be purchased of our main website. The product reference is 3161. Uh, it's available for purchase immediately, and the database is dispatched uh, directly from our service center uh, to customers for immediate installation. It arrives with the data uh, already installed so that you can go to work immediately. Thanks for being with us today.